Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, look here. Check it out. Check this out, okay? Finally. I finally, 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 finally got a chance to see Hidden Figures. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. I'm late, but hey, better late than never, right? Okay? I finally got a chance to see it yesterday. And let me just tell you, just like everybody else I've been hearing, I loved it. I, 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 I more than loved it. I... I absorbed it, <laughs> I guess you can say. It was a very powerful and very inspiring movie. So the people who were telling me that were not lying. So I want to thank you all for hipping me to this, Jones. I went on and checked it out. Um, and because I love being inspired, I'd rather see more movies like this with images and messages like this and less about you know, a gangster, we being gangsters shooting and killing each other, but that's a whole nother subject right there. I wanted to talk about hidden figures and some of the things that I really enjoy about the movie itself. Okay, um, for many, of course by now, because I'm late as I don't know what, everybody know Hidden Figures is the uh, movie which stars uh, Octavia Spencer, uh, Taraji P. Henson, and Janae, Janelle Monet. Um, and they playing the characters of Dorothy Vaughn, Katherine Johnson, and Mary Jackson. You know, this is a story of a team of African American women mathematicians who served vital roles in NASA during the early years of the U.S. space program. You know, this was also during the segregation and racism era of the 60s as well. And also during a time where NASA was feeling under deep pressure to beat Russia in sending an astronaut into space, you know. Um, and that was a kind of thing that I caught in it that echoed throughout the movie to me um, of being first. It was all everything was about being first, you know. Um, and but, you know, without giving the movie away, you know, the details and stuff like that. Um, because it was a movie that took base took place in the segregation era of this country, there was a lot of scenes in there that, of course, you know, kind of curdled your blood. We know those who experienced it. Me myself, I was born in 1965, so I didn't really experience the experience experience the 60s thing. But I, um, but of course, my parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents and all that did. And these little things, you know, like the riding on the back of the bus that really curves our blood. Um, there's a scene in there without giving too much away. Uh, Taraji had to always had every single day had to run across the whole entire lot of the job and a half a mile away just to use the colored bathroom or where she was being scrutinized for even doing the smallest things such as pouring herself a cup of coffee or the character that was played by Octavia where, you know, they're giving her um, supervisor duties, but because she's black, she's not getting supervisor pay or the supervisor title. Little things like that. But like I say, the biggest thing I really, why I made this video is the biggest thing that I walked away from the movie with. And I'm sure many of people did. And if you didn't, check it out. Um, but... The part I feel strongly about regarding this movie was what these women did, these black women, colored women, um, did when they found out that they were going to be replaced by real computers, i.e. IBM mainframes. You know, during that time, they were called computers. People was considered computers. They were math geniuses and all that. So they was going to be replaced by the big old IBM mainframe, mainly because mainly because the computers can run faster. And with data always changing so much with this whole NASA thing of the program they were working on, they needed something to be just as fast that can keep up with them. So, but the biggest thing, so these women were in jeopardy of losing their jobs. You know what I'm saying? 
But the biggest thing that I walked away from was instead of weeping and whining about it, they figured out a way to take advantage of the situation. You know what I'm saying? The character played by, I'll tell you what they really did when she discovered the situation and she discovered a manual, learning how to work and program these things. She made copies of this manual. And what they did was they learned, or to take it even further, they taught each other how to program this IBM mainframe computers. You know what I'm saying? Making themselves viable. You know, as a result, they figured out what everybody else at NASA couldn't figure out. You know what I'm saying? As a result of that, they made themselves and their positions even more valuable at NASA than they had ever been before. In other words, how can I say this? In other words, they took what appeared to be a hopeless situation and turned it into a strategy for progress. That's a, that's a big lesson of life in general, that we are going to come across them stumbling blocks. But sometimes when the cube is kind of in this direction and it looks hopeless, maybe if we can turn that cube a little bit at an angle, maybe about 45 degrees this way, we see a whole different point to it. And we're able to attack it and better yet, able to, what's for lack of a better word, able to take control of it. You know what I'm saying? And instead of letting it take control of us. Um, another thing that to me was the underlying th theme of the movie, like I said before, the whole thing about um, NASA in, in, in America, U.S., trying to beat Russia into getting an astronaut in the space, there was a whole belief that ran throughout the movie, which was basically one of the things I quote Kevin Costner said, and maybe another character, um, basically whoever gets there first establishes a base should be able to claim ownership. That was what the NASA believed. You know what I'm saying? It was all about being first. It was all about being first. They were the first color woman to work at NASA. Um, uh, the character Taraji B. Henson was the first to excel in what she excelled in, um, black woman. Um, uh, they were the first to learn that IBM mainframe, you know what I'm saying? It was always about that, you know what I'm saying? Now, besides another thing that I learned from it is great leaders help other leaders. The character, again, played by Octavia Spencer, um, she's a great leader. And what she did is with her staff, there was that she was not being paid to supervise. She basically taught them. You know what I'm saying? She helped each other. They all helped each other succeed. Um, now about the characters in this thing, um, the main characters, like I say, um, uh, J Janelle Monae played um, Mary Jackson, and she did an excellent job. She, matter of fact, she was really powerful. She was really strong. Janelle Monet is somebody who I don't know. It's another she's another person I always paid attention to from when I first came out. When she came out with the Rico Suave Pompadour hairdo, I thought that was kind of different. And and it, it, it first it stood in front of her, her talent because it kept, caught my attention. Then I was able to see really, you know, the graceful person and talent wise she is. So she actually um, did an excellent job in this movie. Somebody said that she was. In the movie called uh, Moonlighting, I guess it is Moonwalk or Moonstruck or whatever it is. I want to check her out in that. Um, the actress, well, I keep mentioning Octavia Spencer. She played the character of Dorothy Vaughn. Um, I I've always loved Octavia too. Octavia had these eyes that kind of pierce you. You know what I'm saying? There's something about those eyes that did. She make these facial expressions that when her eyes pierce you, you better watch out. You know what I'm saying? And of course, Taraji, anybody who knows me know I'm a big fan of Taraji P. Henson. Um, not just the simple fact that she's a homegirl and all that kind of stuff, but just her range. Um, let me tell you a little story about her. First of all, let me just say, first of all, I'm going to tell the story and I'm going to tell you why I feel strongly about her. Um, Taraji, I first seen in a movie that was made by a local filmmaker, basically, 
Um, and the movie was called uh, 24 7. Later on, it was the name was changed to uh, Streetwise. Maybe you can find it um, ordering online or something like that. Or Bruce Brown himself, the filmmaker who actually made it. And I remember when, when Bruce first released this movie and I had got a copy of it from him. And um, I noticed Taraji in this movie. She plays a character in this movie. And she. Uh, it was something about her even then that really stood out to me. I was like, that girl is good, you know, and this was years ago. This was 19, maybe 98, 97, 98, I guess, something like that. Anyway, um, but, um, but it was the character she played really caught my attention. And not too long, shortly, not much long, a couple of years after that, she did um, Baby Boy. That was the first thing I'd seen on. There was a nationwide film type of thing. And um, I ran. I remember running into a Bruce Brown one time in the um, in the grocery store over here. <laughs> and I was talking at that time. I was talking about, man, man, I see Taraji blew up and all. And he was like, yeah, um, really interesting story. And I got from Bruce Brown. Basically, John Singleton had seen that movie, had that VHS of that movie that Bruce did. And apparently I wasn't the only one that thought there was something about her, but he felt that as well. And there's a scene in that movie that takes place at a, well, first of all, it's a movie and the, the, the backdrop theme of the movie is a theme of being in the go-go culture in Washington, D.C. But there's a scene that takes place in that movie at a, a funeral home. And so basically the word I hear is that John Singleton basically contacted the funeral home to find out, to get contact information of this filmmaker, Bruce Brown, to find out how to get in contact with Taraji, and the rest became history. So, at any rate, I've I've always watched her over the years in all the different roles she played, whether it was Tyler Perry's Joan, or, or and she done a couple of Tyler Perry Johns, um, 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 the family to praise and, uh, you know, I can do bad by myself. I mean, all the other kind of Benjamin Button stuff she's done over the years. Like me and my man Chuck even did a little video tribute to her years ago. Um, but the biggest thing that I've been hunting me, been worried about Taraji lately is the fear of her being typecast. I mean, she plays a role so good that. I honestly thought she, I was scared that she was going to be typecast and be cookie lions for the rest of her life. You know what I'm saying? Because she's so good at cookie. But what this movie Hidden Figures does is allow her to show you, you're not going to typecast me because what you do not see in Taraji in this movie is cookie lions. And that's what I love the most. She played the heck out of that, bro. Even in the scene where she breaks and just finally explodes with the whole bathroom thing. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, I know there's some people. I'm not I'm not the last of the Mohicans. There's probably some people still who haven't seen it after me, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and that typecasting thing for black actors and actors is a big, big deal. Because once you get typecast, man, you know. Anybody in the business know it is hard from that point on. As a matter of fact, actor Michael K. Um, Williams. Many know Michael K. Williams as the character of uh, Omar on The Wire. Awesome actor. You must also know him as Chalky White from Boardwalk Empire. And the many other things he did. He, had, he even played a little small role in, um, in, in Chris Rock's joint, I Think I Love My Wife. But um, Michael K. Williams just recently made a video... Um, you can find it on YouTube, which touches on the topic of being typecast. And in this video clip, he's playing all the different roles and he's talking about, are we typecasting ourselves? Are we letting Hollywood typecast? It's a really deep uh, clip. Um, if you haven't seen that, go, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in Michael K. Williams typecasting, I guess. And all that, but that's uh, this clip is long enough. I keep saying I'm not gonna do long clips like this, but wham, bam, I did it again. Um, oops, you might as well call me Brittany. <laughs> all right, I, I see that. Um, I'll be right there. Um, at any rate, love the movie. Can't wait to add it to my library. Um, of the movies that, that this, it's considered my one of the top greatest movies of all time. And that's um.
I don't always say that about a movie. It's up there with to me with dead presidents and, and, <laughs> and love and basketball and all that kind of stuff. At any rate, if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. If you have seen it, then I'm sure you agree with me. All right? Much love. Peace to you. Hey, what's happening, y'all? In the words of my main man, Frankie Beverly, thank you kindly, y'all, uh, for taking the time to stop by my YouTube channel. I hope the clip you just watched did help in some kind of way towards inspiring you towards some kind of direction. At any rate, don't forget to uh, make sure you subscribe so you can always stay up to date with any new content that I will be releasing. And other than that, have yourself a blessed day, all right? Peace.